Okay. Welcome everyone. In this is our, I don't even know how many annual uh, essay awards contest. I mean, I, is oh, is Maureen here? Do we have Maureen? Because she's okay. If Maureen can quickly do the math in her head and let us know what year this is, I don't know. I I'm can't familiar. tell you. It's <laughs> been over ten years. At least I mean, we keep saying we've been saying that for like the last. 10. I will <laughs> yes. look it up. <laughs> well, this is all this is our I know for a fact this is our third year of holding it virtually, which um at first, you know, it was we were a little disappointed to have to do it, but I don't know. I think we we've realized that there are some kind of cool aspects to being able to do it over Zoom. So we're glad that everyone had everyone who's here at least was able to break away from their busy lives and join us to basically do what we really are here for which is to give away money i mean let's be honest and we want to hear about what you know the winning essays but it's really the money part right um okay so i think what i want to do is first introduce a few folks in the room so we are joined by students and we're also joined by some sacramento city college english department faculty including committee members and they will be uh we can introduce them more specifically as we go we're also joined by Riyadh Bakur. He is our professor of history and global studies coordinator. And he is worn, he does not look worn out, but he is worn out because he's been hosting this whole uh, global fair today. We're also joined by Dean Marcy Selva, our Dean of the Language and Literature Division. And she, um, I would love it, Marcy, actually, if you'd be willing to just to say a, a few words um, about, about our division and our, our, our department, really. We don't care about the division, our department. <laughs> <laughs> yes, never mind those other, those other people in our, in our division. Um, well, thank you, Donna, and thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm, I'm actually really excited to be here for many reasons, but um, one is this is a big highlight, I think, for the English department every year. Uh, because we get to, I mean, obviously we read students' papers all year long, right? And in every semester, and, but we don't get much of a chance to actually, you know, publicly recognize the copious skills and talents of our campus community at SEC. And this is one of those opportunities. And uh, so I am, uh, you know, thrilled to, to be here and to congratulate the winners and to thank everybody for participating and um, and the English department for all the really hard work that they put into this. Um, it's it's a really fun event, and and as Donna said, we get to give away the money. So um, <laughs> always always a good thing. Um, so congratulations, everybody, and um, and uh, have fun. Thank you very much, Dean Selva. I think what I'd like to do first is. Maybe it just in case just to remind all of us what the prompt was that we chose for this semester and then i'll turn it over to Jeff to say a few a few more words about. Um, writing writing and writing contests um, we actually chose this prompt the day that we all heard that bell hooks passed away, and so it was sort of like um, certain not serendipitous, but we were very inspired on that day. Um, and those of you who wrote an essay, you are very well, very familiar with the prompt, but just to kind of bring her words into the space, she wrote, everywhere I go, people want to feel more connected. Oh, sorry, I moved my little chat box here. People, uh, they want to feel more connected to their neighbors, they want to feel more connected to the world. And when we learn that through love, we can have that connection, we can see the stranger as ourselves. And the prompt was very open in terms of considering that quote, write an essay that explores the value of connection. And we, we, we received several very profound and moving essays on this topic. We say this every year, but it's every year it's true. It was very difficult to rank them. And we, the committee deliberated um, between the, you know, the finalists and we discussed and we argued, we fought, we, we cried, you know, we laughed, I don't know. Um, but the most important thing is that every single student who is here today, who is who entered the contest, all deserve 
Um, well, I'll let, I'll let Jeff say more about this because I kind of have a feeling he's going to go in this direction, but all deserve commendations for doing something, for having the courage, having the bravery to submit a piece of writing. So Jeff, if you'd like to say a few words on writing and writing contests, I'd love to have you. I would happily, thank you. Hi everybody. Um, I think most of you <clears throat> know who I am, but for those of you that don't, uh, my name is Jeff Knorr. I am a professor in the English department and uh, a writer myself. I'm the past poet laureate of Sacramento. Um, and uh, as an active writer, uh, you know, I, I submit my work uh, regularly all the time to journals and presses and contests. And, you know, I submitted to a lot of contests in the last four years. Um, copious amounts. So I, I understand um, a bit about that process and what it feels like. And I just, I do want to echo Donna's sentiments and thank all of you on behalf of the committee for taking the time to write but beyond that, to have the courage and the vision to write something that is vulnerable and meaningful uh, about a subject that I think often in our uh, academic culture, well, and just generally outside of our, our close relationships and family, uh, it's a subject matter we're scared to talk, talk about, I think, often, which is love, right? And we, uh, I think we often think that love uh, doesn't have a place to be discussed in uh, workplaces or academic circles or you know places outside of of our close relationships. And I think that um, I, I think that's actually a mistake, frankly. And I just want to thank all of you guys for having the courage to do that. Because when we write, um, we always reveal part of ourselves that, that the readers may not know, right? And, and that is what makes our writing compelling and interesting and makes our individual experiences universal. And we all felt that as readers of your work. Um, we felt tied to you. We felt moved by you. We were compelled by what you had to say. And I think that in, in the world of contests, of course, it, it becomes competitive. And so we wouldn't submit if we didn't think we could win, right? And, and, and that's also an act of courage to simply think, I have the chops enough to win this, right? And I'm, I'm a believer deeply <clears throat> uh, that you can't win if you don't get out on the field and play, right? So, so there's that too, right? I mean, you know, there are a lot of people who might think, oh, yeah, I, I, I could enter that contest or I could win that, but never write, never enter it, and they've not stepped on the field. Just to step on, on the field and play takes a lot of energy, and I want to commend all of you for that. Um, and then to, you know, to have the patience to wait and to hear from us and to remember that um, even if you don't win a contest, uh, it, the results can always be bittersweet. Um, I, I went through years of being second, third, and fourth in contests. And, you know, it, it's, it's maddening and it is uh, also a process by which you gain some confidence, <laughs> right? Hey, I was second again. That's really great. Um, but, but know that um, to come in second or third or fourth or honorable mention or whatever place you come in, at that point, it really is not necessarily a comment on your writing as much as it is a comment on uh, how how the judges were moved in a certain direction in a certain moment at a certain time. And 
these things are <clears throat> out of your control as a writer. They're in some ways out of the control of the judges, right? Because you can always pivot to a different choice and then, well, you know, that's just different choice. To get as far as you all have gotten, um, it, you should feel proud of that and know that, um, uh, know that your writing uh, and, and your hearts uh, affected all of us, okay? Um, <clears throat> I think in the, in the spirit of this global studies fair and conference, um, I want to read uh, something more by Bell Hooks uh, as an extension of what you all wrote about. And, you know, um, I was reading recently a bit about compassion um, and love. And, and the Dalai Lama refers to love as this desire to desire for interconnectedness, right? And there are all sorts of, of love we might think about, all, all sorts of love you guys wrote about really, right? About self-love and uh, love of family members and community and who we are as a people. And uh, I think that this notion of desire for interconnectedness in a time that we've all just experienced immense amount of isolation really is important to keep in mind. And I was also reading a bit about compassion and how compassion is an act of courage because it forces us to have to feel someone else's pain. And when we feel someone else's pain, we have to feel our own pain, right? And that it takes an immense amount of courage to to be compassionate because we have to step into our own, our own pain, right? And I think that the, the judges, the other judges will agree with me in saying that we felt your courage and compassion uh, in your, in your essays. Bell Hooks also writes that in this society, there is no powerful discourse on love emerging either from politically progressive radicals or from the left. I think she makes the implicit statement there that there's definitely never love from the right, <laughs> but I'll leave that <laughs> as it is. The absence of a sustained focus on love in progressive circles arises from a collective failure to acknowledge the needs of the spirit and an overdetermined emphasis on material concerns. Without love, our efforts to liberate ourselves and our world community from oppression and exploitation are doomed. As long as we refuse to address fully the place of love in struggles for liberation, we will not be able to create a culture of conversion where there is mass turning away from an ethic of domination. Without an ethic of love shaping the direction of our political vision and our radical aspirations, we are often seduced in one way or another into continued allegiance to systems of domination, such as imperialism, sexism, racism, and classism. I think that's really just something to kind of think about and ponder and, and to align ourselves with and for you writers to remember that you wrote about things uh, and, and feelings and an ethic of love that, that works against these systems of domination. And for that, congratulations. And we honor you for doing that seriously. Uh, because that in our time right now, that act of art is huge. So thank you for that. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Donna. Wow, thanks, Jeff. I, I, I just was putting in the chat like, "Wow, ethic of domination!" Like that right. perfectly captures something that I often try to like talk about, but I don't have a, a language for it. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. And with that, I think I, I think we're ready to move on to uh, start announcing some prizes, shall we? Um, so one thing I will say is that one, one of my favorite things about last year is 
the students in the space and, and faculty were just blowing up the chat. And, and so I would like to welcome, invite, and encourage you to put any thoughts, shout outs, uh, you know, expressions of appreciation, because what we'll do is we will first read a, just a bit, a passage or a short excerpt from the winning, from the essay as before we, you know, as we announce the prize, as a way to show our own appreciation and to and to really honor the the words that we are here to honor today. So it is my uh, hold on my turn to <laughs> advance my slide, and I will be presenting the two honorable mentions. So we knew we would have a first, second, and third place. That's always we do that. But when it comes to the honorable mentions, that that usually means it's it they're essays that we just had to give something to, <laughs> you know we we decided on the first, second, and thirds, but we had these, you know we 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 needed to we wanted to recognize two of the essays that didn't place in the in the uh, winning categories, but we felt like we still deserved some a uh, recognition. And we didn't advertise this, but we decided that to attach a token of our appreciation for that recognition with $100. So I will, the, for each honorable mention, we'll be receiving a $100 prize, which I mean, what, that's like one tank of gas these days, I can get you across the street, right? <laughs> so I'd first like to start by reading from and I need to move my little windows. This, the essay is titled From Unplugged to Power On. Sorry, the essay is Unplugged to Power On from this essay. And this writer, one, one of the things we really loved, loved about this writer is she referred to a short, a short film. And this is part of, towards the end of her essay, she writes, the short movie Look Up by Gary Turk details a love story that unfolds when the protagonist looks up from his phone to ask a passing stranger for directions. The film explores the endless possibilities that arise when we look up from our screens and pay attention to the world around us. Indeed, it is an inspiring reminder to unplug in order to power on our capacity for true connection and engagement. Although the film was published in 2014, its lesson prevails. Everyone, regardless of age, can benefit from applying the moral of the story and actively seeking human connection. Particularly in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic and increasing technological accommodations, we must remember that technology is meant to serve as a supplement, not a substitute for personal interactions. A little bit later in the essay, and this is concluding paragraph, this writer writes, now more than ever, it's important to seek human contact in a world that is becoming contactless. Only when we truly connect with one another can we begin to notice how wonderful this vast world is with an endless number of people who offer endless potential for friendship and companionship. And that is our honorable mention, which goes to, hold on, I want to make sure I get this name right, Boy Ann Nguyen Son. So I don't know if Boy Ann is in the is in the in the space, but you can put a chat, a shout out to her in the chat if you'd like. And I'm gonna move on to the next honorable mention. This is from an essay titled My Story. And this particular essay, uh, this, this student wrote about her connection both to herself, her culture as an immigrant um, to the United States, what she wrote about really moved us and, and her, that kind of, her discussion of kind of grappling with her connection to her culture was really powerful. She writes, it is through our need to connect that we find the best parts of ourselves, which is why Hook's words resonated deeply within me. It reminded me of Pacific, Pacific Islanders like myself who are struggling with identity, 
alienation and belonging in the Pacifica community. The topic of how Polynesian, Micronesian, Melanesian, Pacific Islander are you is a harmful question that has affected the older Pacifica population, is affecting the current generation and will affect future generations to come. This sentiment causes Pacifica Islanders to question their sense of belonging to their Pacifica community. The reason why I'm so passionate about working with the Pacific Island nonprofit organization is to dispel otherness within the Pacifica community and encourage authentic Pacifica diaspora voices to be heard through art and storytelling. She continues on later in the essay, she says, it is in the moments where we are desperately craving a connection. The work we do to build that connection and what we are willing to sacrifice to obtain it, that are the moments that define us. In my case, it was my need to connect that helped me learn the importance of my own language, Tongan, as I realized later in the future that not speaking it would mean that my silence would be the death of my ancestors. I am a product of all those who have come before me and the new ancestor for all those who will come after me. And I don't know if she's here, but that is actually my, one of my current students, Joyce Cocker. Um, so congratulations to Boyan and Joyce. Actually, Joyce was in my class last semester. She's in my current 302. And, you know, as a judge, I had to excuse myself from judging her essay. Uh, but I was so pleased when I saw the rest of the committee appreciate it. And she's a fantastic writer, as is Boy Ann. And I just want to say congratulations to the both of you. And congratulations on winning 100 bucks. You don't have to buy me anything with it, but you could if you wanted to. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. So to announce our third place winner, which comes with a prize of $300, we have our esteemed professor, Alex White. And Alex, I have the excerpt on the next slide. So if you just give me a signal when you want me to move over to it, and I will. Okay, I have it pulled up on my side as well. So you can go ahead and move it over if you'd like. Hi, everybody. I am Professor White. I teach in the English department. And um, I love reading these essays. I think this is the third time I've been a part of this contest. And I really felt like this particular year was a there were so many great submissions. It's really hard to decide. I decided to, I chose this essay to present because I really liked the way that this writer emphasized and centered on love in a way that I felt like the other essays didn't um, pick up on. And as many of you guys know, I'm very biased towards love. So I really felt like, I really felt like this writer did a really great job of really elevating the power of love. Um, so I'm going to read an excerpt now. Um, the value of connection becomes evident as we begin to form relationships with those close to us through empathy and vulnerability. When I think of those close to me, I admire them and the strength they have given me. Each of them has seen me at so many highs and have carried me through my own deepest darkness. My mother has always been such a pillar in my life and has been my biggest supporter. It was when I came out to her that it taught me the strength and courage to be vulnerable. And I believe it made our mother-son relationship that much more dynamic. My mother had shown the possibilities of what love can mean. She showed me that if love is truly what connects us, we need to be able to see a person holistically and accept them for who they are. To think, I would have thought my vulnerability, my failures and my fears were what kept people away from me and how wrong I have been to think so. It's these qualities that I, that I thought made me weak that have brought me so much closer to those in my life. To be vulnerable and open every part of yourself, it takes an immense amount of strength and courage. We need to be able to truly see ourselves as if we want to understand, as it is so easy to hide, to be scared and shut yourself off. So why do you hide? Is it easier? Do you think you need to be strong? I see you, I hear you, you're just like me and I'm here for you. So as you can see that essay was just so beautifully written and 
I'd like to announce the winner. Kyle Woolsley. Congratulations. Thank you for submitting that essay. It was a joy to read it and I'm very proud of you and happy for you. Um, wow. Now, Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll pass it over, but wow, that was, I was, did, did anyone see the confetti that went flying up on the screen yes, for a second there? Awesome. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I was like trying to type in the chat. Yeah, the, the chills of those last lines. Wow. Wow. And yeah, I saw that I Joyce was... is here. So yay, Joyce, my student. And yay, thank you, Alex and Kyle. That was, that was amazing. That was yes, so that was powerful. Thank you, Kyle. How did I make that confetti happen? <laughs> oh. <laughs> the confetti. <laughs> well, announcing our second place winner with a prize tag of a prize tag, you owe us, <laughs> no, with a prize tag of $500, we have our esteemed colleague and professor, Dr. Maureen Dana. Hi, thank you, Donna. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Professor Dana, Maureen Dana from the English department. Donna, I sent you two different passages. Do I get to read both? I have them all on here, so. All right, good, yeah. good. So let's all, everyone snuggled in because- I got Maureen's some things to read. <laughs> I couldn't choose, so I wanted to do both. And I just wanna um, echo what Alex said as we, um, we had a wonderful, a, a really strong selection of essays this um, this year, and they were really um, enjoyable and moving to read. And we had a lot of great discussion and about all of them. And um, as uh, Donna has also mentioned, and Jeff too, I thought it was just really wonderful how um, open and vulnerable and authentic. Um, all of the writers were in different ways in their essays. And on the second place winner, we had quite a lot of discussion about that and about the subject matter that the writer was tackling and the way that they were willing to share um, their and their families' experiences of um, being forced um, because of violence to leave their um, housing situation and then experiencing homelessness and um, living out of their car, um, all while trying to, to continue going to school. And so it was a really very, uh, very powerful, very poignant, and um, sadly, very timely, I think, topic, not just for that writer, but um, as we know, for what so many in our communities and in communities across the country are experiencing. Um, so we really uh, thought this was a worthy um, essay. So I'll just read a couple of passages. This is from the beginning. Um, and the writer, the essay writes, um, oh, and I'm sorry, the title of this essay is Family Equals Home. Um, the writer writes, um, having to go through this experience while I was taking classes like Calculus 2 was tough. I spent days and nights in coffee shops to use the free Wi-Fi they offered. I remember hearing my mom cry out sobs from our car while I was working on an essay late at night. Little things that I used to take for granted, like having privacy, running water, electricity, and good sleep were all thrown out of the car window. At first, I reached out to a lot of people that I once considered my friends on social media, and so did my mom. Unfortunately, no one really seemed to care or help us to find temporary shelter. The most I got was, you should go make a GoFundMe, Alex. I quickly learned the value of an honest connection. Sometime later, I reached out to one of my professors about my situation. He kindly recommended me for a job. I felt very lucky to start as a tutor in the math lab. I wanted to go to EOPS, MESA, or TRIO STEM and seek other support groups that were available to me. However, I honestly just felt numb. I remember feeling numb as if I no longer had a direction in my life. I started having thoughts which made me want to give everything up. I vividly remember crying my eyes out on top of a bridge overlooking a river. We had parked by the river at night so we could sleep without the fear of being asked to drive away. I remember having promised my mom that I would become successful and take care of her. On that night, I honestly would have ended it all, but I'm glad I didn't. 
Instead, I screened my lungs out into the river and climbed off the railing. This cathartic experience gave me the courage to come back into our car determined to survive with what I had. There's a quote from a book called Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer, which stresses the importance of reciprocity between mankind and nature. Kimmerer writes, the land knows you even when you are lost. I felt this connection when I yelled that night into the river because I saw myself. I thought I could be like Tarzan. It was silly but hey, it kept me going. Um, and I thought, I'm sorry, I realized I don't know how to pronounce Kimmerer, but I felt that part about the connection to the land and the South uh, was just, it just gave me chills. It was very powerful and uh, really connected so nicely um, to what the writer was, and powerfully to what the writer was writing about. Later, um, the writer describes in this narrative you know, making some new friends, but not really wanting to talk about what was going on with them. Um, and then having an encounter with another person in a similar situation. Um, and the essay um, concludes, uh, I remember walking past a man living out of his car. It was parked by the street with a broken tire. And this is an experience um, he has down in uh, Midtown. He begged for me for spare change and for something to eat. He looked broken. I am ashamed of myself now for not having helped him. I thought I don't really know him and that he could uh, mug me. So I ran in the opposite direction out of fear. This fear that made me feel disconnected enough to treat him without human dignity. I later learned that over time as a result of such treatment, homeless people develop worsening mental conditions which then prolong and entrap them in poverty. I consider myself very fortunate to have connections and access to resources like education. As a result, I now have a place to call home because I found someone who was willing to let us temporarily share their flat. After a few months, we saved up enough to rent our own rooms in a house. We now look back optimistically about what happened, but honestly, I'm still upset. I'm upset that I lied to people about my situation to save face, I'm upset that I felt blinded by social norms enough to treat that man by the street without dignity. The late social activist Bell Hooks once said, everywhere I go, people want to feel more connected. They want to feel more connected to their neighbors. They want to feel more connected to the world. And when we learn that through love, we can have that connection. We can see the stranger as ourselves. Looking back, I now see that man is myself because I might have been him if not for my resources and connections. Through overcoming this experience, I felt more connected to my mom, myself, and my community. I found myself again by overcoming adversity with my family. I can only wish now that I can become more connected to the people around me, because when we are connected, we are at home. And I love that line as well. And so this wonderful um, essay, um, Family Equals Home is written by Alex Lee. Congratulations, Alex. I hope I'm saying that night right, Alex Lee. Um, we're proud to have you as our second place winner. Uh, congratulations. I see Haley clapping. Of course, we can't hear her clapping, but you know, oh my gosh. That was beautiful, that, that last line. Uh, so amazing. Congratulations, Alexander. <sighs> Okay. <laughs> Ooh, we've got to, I'm crying right now. Well, you'll, you have $5, $500 with which to wipe away those tears. So <laughs> that brings us to the big finale. And I'd like to invite our, the, my co-coordinator of the contest, Haley Laird, to announce our first place winner. All right, hi everyone. Um, my name's Haley Laird and I'm a, I teach in the English department and I am thrilled to be able to present this first place. As all the others have said, it was really tough to identify a first, second, third and honorable mention since everyone has such strong and incredible essays. Um, but, you know, we did have to and um, in first place, we are pleased to award the entry to an essay called Building a Bridge, which articulates the importance of social connection, particularly when it doesn't come naturally. 
The writer responds to the prompt by initially sharing that, quote, the majority of their life, they have felt completely alone. But being on the autism spectrum, the author writes, is a set of trade-offs to be managed. The essay stood out to the committee due to its sharp reflections on this liminal space between social connection and isolated retreat, its quick wit and careful construction of sentences, and overall for its thoughtful message about change and the possibility and potential for growth. So I'm gonna share a few passages from this entry. The student writes, the subtle tilt of a head a twitch in the tip of an index finger, a blink that took a few split seconds longer than the one before it. These are the threads in the tapestry of human emotions that weaves itself across the face and body of every living person. Most people see these things and react to them intuitively in a subliminal connection that even they are barely aware of. But for me, what is an open door to others looks like an impenetrable wall of brick. And before I found my own way inside, I spent every day of my life chipping my teeth and skinning my knuckles upon it. Later in the essay, the writer explains how we got a job at a grocery store. He says, at first I saw this as yet another burden, having to converse and interact with hundreds if not thousands of customers and coworkers for hours every day was a waking nightmare but I soon came to see the experience as a frightening salvation. My emotional intelligence was still blunt as a club, but my analytical skills were like a scalpel. Every interaction, whether it went well or poorly, was a data point I couldn't analyze. And I went home after every shift with troves of mental notes to write down and study, giving myself over to a grand controlled experiment that only I was privy to. I tried out every tone of voice, every style of humor, and every gesture of body language I could wrap my greedy hands around, constructing a nearly flawless translation module that let me feel what others felt and convey my feelings to them in turn. The student ends the essay by writing, treating my relationships as a science instead of an art has not only allowed me to reach passability, but obtain excellence in my social skills. From charisma to comedy, there is nothing I cannot master. And finally, after years of constant improvement, the things I ached for as I sobbed to myself in the late hours of the night are now what make me tear up with joy and gratitude. I can find friends in nearly everyone I talk to. I'm able to summon forth jokes from thin air. For many, I'm a trusted confidant they can speak to about deeply personal emotional issues. I have everything I once craved and it is beautiful. I am beautiful. But most importantly, I can see the beauty in the people I am lucky enough to know. And I'm far from finished in my search. So with that, the committee wishes to say congratulations to Sam Buck on his essay, Building a Bridge, which has won first place in our contest. Congratulations, Sam. Okay, I'm legitimately doing all that. Okay, I'm gonna congratulate him to all of our finalists. I'm gonna stop sharing <laughs> and you can put on gallery view or do what you need to do and so we can see to there if you want to everyone wants to unmute and clap yay hey. <laughs> wow so i don't know we have hold on let me do a time check it is 5 45 so i have one thing i want to say and that is that we will be following up um either later tonight or probably tomorrow morning actually just to confirm the addresses of our finalists so that we can send out our, the check and it will get to the right place. Once we do that, our college is really slow at things. So it has to go to the checks have to get printed and all that. Um, so, but it usually takes, once they get printed, it, it takes a few weeks to go out to you. So we'll be in touch about that. Um, but that's the housekeeping thing, I guess. Um, I've said all I want to say. I, I think we have plenty of time. I know there's other members of the committee are here if they wanted to. Anyone can, you know, unmute and say a few words. I'd love to hear from the winners as well. If you feel compelled, you don't have to, of course, kind of put you on the spot. But if anyone feels compelled to say something, uh, 
love to hear from you. I just want to say thank you, I guess. This is really validating. I, I, uh, I kind of appreciate, I mean, I, I'm not, not kind of, I really appreciate um, the honor of uh, the first place. So we're with pride. Thank you. Congratulations. A thousand, um, a thousand dollars of appreciation. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I'm in Professor Lewis's honors um, literature class. And I just wanted to say thank you for the second place. Going through this experience was quite tough. Um, I literally just saw my mom and, you know, I kind of just knew instinctively. Um, but I'm glad to have experienced it. And I'm really glad to share the narrative with everyone here. Um, so, yeah, thank you again for the prize. <laughs> Thank you and congratulations you. and Lewis because when your student wins, you win. That's what I, I know. Have. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Fantastic. Anyone else want to say, speak any words into the space before we close out this beautiful, beautiful event? I just want to say how beautifully the writing and the prompt and Jeff's kind of comments, contextualizing the prompt and the ethic of love and opposing the ethic of domination really is just so inspiring and moving. And it, it gives me hope for the future. And I really commend all the students who participated and won. Uh, and even the ones who didn't win, I'm sure it was a kind of a, a tough call uh, judging the essay so really great job to uh to all of you and to the committee thanks for all the hard work you put into this it's really great well on that note are we out of here oh they were wonderful wonderful essays thank you yes i agree really last wonderful. last round of applause have a oh i say hold on rosalinda has some go for it <laughs> I wanted to say real quick, um, thank you for the honor you mentioned. I'm in Professor Donna's class, so um, I really enjoyed reading the experts that you guys read. Um, I, I feel that all the winners um, uh, deserved it. The one that I really wanted to do a shout out to was to Alex's essay. That one really stood out to me. It was very inspiring. Um, I, yeah. It's just very really inspiring. So I just wanted to give you a shout out, but yeah, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Joy. oh my gosh thank you so much I appreciate it and honestly thank you so much for this too I mean honestly to having Alex read my essay and knowing the work she does both in the l, l department and in other departments it just it means a lot to have her read it you know so um yeah I, I'm glad that it, she was the one to read it well, she she chose yours. She was like, "I want to read that one." <laughs> I didn't know you knew oh each other. <laughs> no, no, no. I just I just know of her and like all the work she does on campus, and it just it even means more now that you picked that one, you know. So, um, yeah, oh it, just, it just means a lot. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Kyle. I know you just made Alex's year for hearing hearing that. <laughs> that was worth more than a thousand bucks right there. All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Don. Don Hi, everybody. Bye. Bye. I love you. Thanks, all. everyone. Bye. 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 This was awesome.